Now let's talk about the ESP4. What I already recognize is the different mounting position. Can you describe me why? We have here on our demonstration board already realized the 10 degrees inclination. You remember in the theoretical part that we are able to measure much faster than with the DBK plus four. We have to mirror away the sound parts mm -hmm. and therefore with the 10 degrees um, inclination, um, the web material runs parallel to the uh, plate here so that the uh, sound parts can uh, be mirrored away from uh, receiver and um, transmitter. Okay. What can you tell me about the pin assignment for the ESP4? The pin assignment is um, similar like the DBK. We have uh, a seven wire cable, two wires for power supply. We have one output for label detect or splice detect. Uh, we have an um, other output for web break. We have three input lines. With one input line, we can perform the teach-in. The second input line is to switch on an automatic guidance to uh, follow any kind of changes in the material. Yeah? And with the third, you have the option for synchronization. Okay. I have a label here. Can yeah. you show us how it works and how we have to teach in? Yeah. Um, we have the ESP set up in label mode and quick teach. Therefore, it's really very easily. I put um, the label uh, inside um, the barrier. I choose here my box is only to give different signals on the control input line. I give high level on input line C1. This enables the teach in procedure. And I take the signal back, and the teach-in is already finished. Okay. And you can see it here. Um, I get a red LED indicator for oh, okay. the label. And um, inside the gap, it changed to green. This indicates uh, only backing material. And therefore, now I can detect the leading edge of every label. Is it also possible to use link control software to visualize in, in the, the same way like we have uh, seen it for the DBK plus four. Okay. You loop in um, the communication channel to uh, our link control adapter and via the USB cable to the PC. And do we have different housings and mounting possibilities for the ESP? We have two housings. We have the um, uh, standard uh, housing. It looks like the uh, standard DBK plus four means uh, receiver and electronic in one um, thread and below the transmitter. Here we have built up the sample with uh, M12 uh, housing. This transducer are smaller than the M18 transducer and they are in the frequency higher. So this is uh, 500 kilohertz uh, ultrasonic frequency and this is 400 kilohertz ultrasonic frequency. For label, we usually use the 500 kilohertz um, ultrasonic frequency. For splice detection, we use normally the 400 kilohertz um, ultrasonic frequency. Then it, the ESP4 looks like the DBK plus four. So we the same muster as we have seen in the theoretical yeah. part. I have to read out uh, the settings of the sensor. I will do it here now. And after reading out the parameter, I can go to the measurement writer I push the button here, and now, as you can see, you see the um, labels and the gaps um, uh, of the label. It's the same characteristic you have seen in the theoretical yeah. part of the presentation. Okay. So, can a label sensor then also detect a double sheet? No. The labels must always glue, be glued onto the tape here, onto the backing material. If uh, the labels would not be glued, then the fork sensor would reject any teach-in process. The red LED indicator would flash and say, uh, fail teach-in procedure. I have understood label sensors and its applications. Let's remind us of the difference between a label sensor and a splice sensor. Label sensor and splice sensor have a lot of in common. You can say the internal hardware structure is identical 
we have different software strategies. Therefore, an ESP comes as a label sensor and a splice sensor. You choose which function you want to use. The same for the ESF1. You can use it as label sensor and splice sensor. You can say uh, a splice is a single label on an endless backing material. Mm -hmm. yeah? You need different strategies to find the splice. And the splice is the most difficult application. And if we compare multiple labels on a backing material to a single splice on a web material, you could say that a spli splice is actually just a single label on a very long web material. Yeah. Okay. Is this the reason why you have uh, put a label and splice sensor in one housing? That's the reason. Yeah. The biggest difference is when you have a label sensor, the label sensor sees all the time both levels that he has to detect. The label sensor is able to detect the signal level for the label and the signal level for the backing material. And he can follow the change of the signal all the time. The splice sensor sees most of the time only just the signal level of the web. And this can be for ultrasonic signal very, very inhomogeneous. And then suddenly the signal change come, comes from an unknown splice. And uh, uh, the basic signal of the basic material can already be very noisy. And therefore, it's much more difficult to detect a splice compared to detecting labels on a backing material. Why is it more difficult to detect a splice? Has the paper web material special features? Uh, I would not say feature. I would say characteristic. So uh, also very good papers can have for the ultrasonic signal a very noisy um, signal result. So how do you solve it? With special software algorithm, um, we can see for a long time the paper material, we learn the characteristic, and the splice has a slight different characteristic to this, and intelligent software algorithm are able to uh, find this um, parts in the st data stream. Okay. So can you show us how to teach in the splice sensor? Do you have a splice? Well, so Harke, do we have a splice? Johannes, look what I have for you here. It looks like a splice. It is a splice, yeah. So can you show us how to teach in? I knew that you will ask this. Therefore, I had in the meantime changed the setting for the ASP for from quick teach for label to quick teach to splice. So okay. I'm well prepared. We put the web inside the barrier and now I have to initiate the teach in. Um, and I do this um, in that I give on input line C1 high level. I enable um, the teach in procedure. The flash um, starts, um, the light LED starts flashing. I move around about half a meter of the material, then I stop the teach-in procedure, it's finished, and the green LED indicator shows me the wet material, and have a look, I see the splice is coming, I get a red LED. Okay. And that's very easy, as easy as to teach in quick teach a label. You give high level on C1, you transport around about half a meter of the material, you stop teaching and then you can detect the process.